Welcome back ladies and gents. In today's video tutorial I'm going to be looking at part 2 of 4.3 using partial fractions. So the target is to look at two exam questions. Here's the first one. Part A, express 8x plus 4 all over 1 minus x in bracket multiplied by 2 plus x in bracket as partial fractions. Now if you look at my previous video tutorial, this particular fraction follows form 1. So what I can do is first of all let 8x plus 4 all over 1 minus x in bracket, 2 plus x in bracket, both of them multiplied together, equal a over 1 minus x in bracket plus b over 2 plus x in bracket. My next step is to obtain a common denominator which is this one over here. 1 minus x in bracket multiplied by 2 plus x in bracket. So what I need to do is multiply the first fraction top and bottom by 2 plus x and the second fraction top and bottom by 1 minus x. So if I do that I obtain the following. Okay, interesting. What I can do now is compare the numerators. So over here in the numerator I've got 8x plus 4 and over here in the numerator I've got a in bracket 2 plus x plus b in bracket 1 minus x. By comparing I can form an equation and the equation that I form is 8x plus 4 is equal to a in bracket 2 plus x plus b in bracket 1 minus x. Now I need to work out the value of a and the value of b respectively. The way I'm going to do this is by using the method of substitution. First of all I want to work out a. To work out a I need to eliminate b in the equation. The way I can do that is by substituting x equal 1. So if I substitute x equal 1 I get 8 times 1 is 8 plus 4 is 12. Okay so 12 is equal to 2 plus 1 is 3 multiplied by a is 3a. 1 minus 1 is 0 times b is 0. So now I've got a beautiful equation involving a. I can solve this equation for a to obtain a equal 4. Now, I want to work out b, ladies and gents. Go back to the equation and eliminate a. The way we can eliminate a is by substituting x equal minus 2. So if I substitute x equal minus 2 into this equation, I get 8 times minus 2 is minus 16, plus 4 is minus 12. Okay, 2 plus minus 2 is 0 times 8 is 0. 1 minus minus 2 is 1 plus 2, which is 3 multiplied by b is 3b. Now I can solve this beautiful equation to get b equal minus 4. To get the final mark, I can write the following. Therefore, the fraction 8x plus 4 all over 1 minus x in bracket multiplied by 2 plus x in bracket is equal to a, which is 4, over 1 minus x, okay, plus minus 4, I can just write minus 4 over 2 plus x in bracket. And there you have it. That completes part A of the question. Now, moving on to part B. It says, hence or otherwise, expand this particular fraction in ascending powers of x as far as the term in x squared. Whenever you have the word hence, you need to go to the previous part of the question to answer the current part of the question. So what I can do, first of all, for part B is conclude that 8x plus 4 all over 1 minus x in bracket multiplied by 2 plus x in bracket is equal to 4 over 1 minus x in bracket minus 4 over 2 plus x in bracket. Okay, once I've done that, I need to rewrite the first and the second fraction. So, what I can write is 4 in bracket 1 minus x to the power minus 1 minus 4 in bracket 2 plus x to the power minus 1. 
Have, <coughs> have a look at the first bracket, ladies and gents. The first term is 1. So I can use the binomial expansion formula straight away to expand this particular bracket. In the second bracket, the first term is not 1. So I need to first of all factorise in order to use the binomial expansion formula. Okay, I need the first term in this bracket to equal 1. Now, I'm going to quickly factorise this particular bracket. The first one stays the same, so 4 in bracket 1 minus x to the power minus 1 minus 4 multiplied by, take out a factor of 2, in bracket 1 plus a half x, okay, close bracket. Now, what I need to do is check that this particular factorization is correct, ladies and gents. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times uh, 1 over 2x is x, so it's fine. What I need to do is add the icing on the cake. So what I have over here is the power minus 1. Don't forget to raise the 2 to the power minus 1 and the bracket to the power minus 1. Now over here, we've got 1 as the first term. Hence, we can use the binomial expansion formula to now expand this particular bracket. Okay. Two to the power minus one is one over two. Four times one over two is just two. So minus two in bracket, one plus a half x, close bracket, power minus one. Now for the first bracket, I have that I need to replace x in the binomial expansion formula with minus x. And I need to replace n in the binomial expansion formula with minus one. In the second bracket, I need to replace x in the binomial expansion formula with a half x, okay? And the n, I need to replace it with minus 1 in the binomial expansion formula. So, what I want everyone to do now, so those of you who are watching this particular video tutorial, is to expand this, expand this, okay? and then multiply 4 to your expansion for this and multiply minus 2 for your expansion for this. Once you've done that, what I'll do is put up the answer and you can check your work. So have a go ladies and gents. So using the binomial expansion formula, which is this formula over here, you should all have 2 plus 5x plus 7 over 2x squared. That is the final answer. Let's have a look at part C. Okay, so now what we have is that we need to state the set of values of x for which the expansion is valid. I've expanded two binomials. The first one was 1 minus x, all raised to the power minus 1. I know that this particular um, expansion will be invalid but will be valid for certain values of x which satisfy the following condition mod of minus x is less than 1 now mod of minus x is the same as writing mod minus 1 mod x is less than 1 modulus of minus 1 is just 1 multiplied by mod x is just mod x less than 1 that is the same as writing minus 1 is less than x which is less than 1 the second binomial that I have expanded is 1 plus a half x all raised to the power minus 1. This particular binomial is invalid but will be valid for certain values of x that satisfy the following condition. The modulus of a half x is less than 1. I can split this into two mods. So mod a half, mod x is less than 1 mod of 1 over 2 is just 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 mod x is less than 1, hence mod x is less than 2. That there can be written as minus 2 is less than x, which is less than 2. Now, because I've got two binomials over here, I need to work out a set of values of x that will satisfy both binomials. And uh, so what I need to do is to look at the intersection of this range and this range. 
okay, and represents intersection. What I can do is draw a number line, okay, to see what happens visually. So over here I've got minus 2, I've got 2, minus 1 and 1. So this particular inequality on the number line looks something like that. And this inequality, ladies and gents, looks something like this over here. What I see is an intersection over here. So both binomials that represent this particular fraction will be valid for minus 1 is less than x, which is less than 1. Or you could write mod x is less than 1. Both are equivalent. And that completes part C of the question and the whole question. Let's have a look at question number 2. Right, so question number 2, I've got that fraction is equal to this part over here. Now, this fraction over here looks crispy. It looks crispy, guys. The reason why it's crispy is because the numerator is a quadratic and the denominator is also a quadratic. So, I need to check if it's an improper fraction or a proper fraction. The coefficient of x squared in the numerator is 3 and the coefficient of x squared in the denominator is 1. So that kind of like, you know, tells me that this could be an improper fraction. The way I can confirm it is by picking any value of x and substituting it into this fraction to see my result. Is it improper fraction or proper fraction? But in this case, it will be an improper fraction. You can try it, guys. Now, part A, find the values of the constants A, B and C. Now, because I have an improper fraction, my very first step is to do long division. So I've got 3x squared plus 4x minus 5. And my divisor is this quadratic over here, which if I expand, I get x squared plus x. Uh, yep, x squared plus x minus 6. Now, I'm going to do my long division. The first term over here is 3x squared. I divide it by the first term over here, which is x squared, to give me 3. Take 3 and multiply each of these terms by 3. I get 3x squared plus 3x minus 18. Now the next step is to subtract these two polynomials. When I subtract the polynomials, I get x plus 13. So first of all, I can see over here that the first term is x. I can't really do x divided by x squared. So the procedure stops there and this x plus 13 represents my remainder. I'm going to call it r. The 3 over here represents a, okay? And this 3 over here has a special name. It is the quotient. Now, what I can do is write this particular fraction as follows. It is equal to a plus my remainder all over the divisor x plus 3, x minus 2. Now a is just 3, plus the remainder is x plus 13, all over um, x plus 3 in bracket, x minus 2 in bracket. Now, I've got a fraction over here which I can split into partial fractions. So I can take this a step further and write 3 plus b over x plus 3 plus c over x minus 2. Now my target is to work out b and c. b and c. So what I need to do now is maybe make things a little bit more neat. So in the exam you'll have a booklet. What you can do is draw like a little box on one side, do your calculation and then go back to your solution over here. So what I can do is write x plus 13 all over x plus 3 in bracket, x minus 2 in bracket, that has to equal b over x plus 3 in bracket plus c over x minus 2 in bracket. 
you have to use your standard method of substitution to work out B and C. So guys, please work out B and C and then I'll put the answer up on the board. Right, ladies and gents, you should all have B equal minus 2, C equals 3. So I'm going to take my B value and C value and put it back into here. There you have it. So, all together, over here, I can write down that A is equal to 3, B is equal to minus 2, and C is equal to 3. And that there completes part A of question 2. Let's move on to part B of the question. Hence, or otherwise, expand this fraction in ascending powers of x as far as the term in x squared. Okay, no problem. Because the word hence is used, we have to go back to our answer in part A to answer part B. So here is my answer from part A. I can take this a step further and write 3 minus 2 in bracket x plus 3 to the power of minus 1 plus 3 in bracket x minus 2 to the power of minus 1. Now inside the brackets, I'm going to swap over the terms. So I can write it as 3 minus 2 in bracket 3 plus x to the power of minus 1 plus 3 minus 2 plus x in bracket to the power of minus 1. The first term over here is not a 1. The first term over here is not a 1. So before we use the binomial expansion formula, we need to factorize. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I can take out a factor of 3. In the bracket, I can put 1 plus a third x. If you expand this bracket, you get 3 plus x. Don't forget to apply the power minus 1. Next one. I can take out a factor of minus 2. Inside the bracket, I will have 1 minus a half x. Okay. If I expand this bracket, I get minus 2 plus x. Don't forget to apply the power minus 1. Okay, take this a step further and simplify it. So 3 minus 2 times 3 to the power minus 1 is minus 2 over 3 in bracket 1 plus a third x, uh, this bracket to the power minus 1. Minus 2 to the power minus 1 is minus 1 over 2. Minus 1 over 2 multiplied by 3 is minus 3 over 2. This bracket over here, 1 minus a half x to the power of minus 1. Now, I'm ready to use the binomial expansion formula to expand this, expand this, and then put it back into this over here. And once I put it back, I just need to simplify and get my terms. Okay, in ascending powers of x up to and including the term in x squared. I'm going to get you guys to expand this and expand this using the binomial expansion formula. But before you do that, a quick note over here. You need to replace x with a third x in the binomial expansion formula when you're expanding this. Okay? And n with minus 1. This bracket over here, you need to replace x with a minus a half x in the binomial expansion formula. And n with minus 1. Okay, so have a go guys. Please expand this bracket, this bracket using the binomial expansion formula. Put it back into here. Simplify and get your terms in ascending powers of x up to including the term in x squared. Have a go people. After expanding, you should all have the following three terms. If you found this video tutorial useful, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video.